Uh, by the way, I see a couple of people uh, sending me tweets uh, just asking, or X's, what is it, tweets, X's, messages on X, let's just call it that, uh, asking about the full interview that JJ had uh, with the vice president of the BRICS Bank. Uh, head over to our YouTube channel, head over to the, our YouTube channel, just look for ENCA, and also on ENCA.com. So if you do want to watch the full episodes uh, of not just Power to Truth from last night, but all the other episodes as well, of course, you can head over to our digital platforms. Now, let's take you back down to uh, Santon. It's beginning to heat up outside temperature wise uh, Rapiwa Madzena hello to you again at the BRICS summit for us but also inside and while BRICS you and I are even talking about this uh, throughout this morning we were talking very macro economies weren't we I think we need to narrow down let's come back down to a micro level for a second how are we looking No, that's absolutely correct. A lot of uh, macro uh, discussions that are happening over the next uh, few days, or since yesterday, actually, uh, Gareth. But uh, in this hour, I actually want to focus on one of the most important conversation many, uh, conversations, many will argue, and that is advancing small and medium businesses, not just in South Africa, but across the BRICS trading bloc and the African continent. Why? Because they are some of the biggest uh, employers uh, at the moment, particularly in the tough environment we find ourselves in in South Africa where employment opportunities are few and far between. And I've actually got the, the minister with me this morning, uh, Stella Davini Abrams, who joins us. Thank you very much for making the time for us this morning. It's an important conversation that you engaged in yesterday. Uh, you gave a keynote address around an intra-BRICS market where we advance uh, small businesses. Tell us a little bit about that concept. Well, the first thing is to have an appreciation of what you said earlier, the role that is being played by small businesses in our economies. It is no different for South Africa because it's part of BRICS. What you look at in the National Development Plan, the National Development Plan says that South Africa must create new jobs by 2030, and it says 11 million new jobs. Yeah. And out of that 11 million, it says 90% will come from small businesses. This is what now brings us to what I spoke about yesterday. Is the, is the environment conducive enough for the small businesses to create those jobs? And we agree that we have not done very well in terms of creating that uh, conducive environment. The first thing is to make sure that we look at the ecosystem. The ecosystem approach that we must take, which brings all critical stakeholders in the small business environment to ensure that small businesses are given an opportunity mm -hmm. to trade fairly, but secondly, they are supported in terms of the access to markets. They are given access to funding, but there are still red tapes that prohibit small businesses that are there, whether through legislation or the access to market. President Ramaphosa appointed Mr. Ngosi as the red tapes are. From our side as the department, we then identify the legal prescripts. We continue to engage the sectors in order to deal with those red tapes. Mm -hmm. That's one aspect. The second aspect, if you look at bigger corporates, they're able to invest on resources for, towards energy. They don't complain much about energy yeah. uh, crisis that they're faced with. They can bring alternatives. Small businesses do not have that luxury. Or, or, or the capability to bring that. This is when we're saying, let's adopt what China is doing. If you see China, they have the dragon head, where in big businesses, they come together to invest in small businesses, assist them to thrive, because they understand the role that is being played by small businesses. We're doing the same here in South Africa to say, let's look at this ecosystem. Big businesses, we have a role. There's certain prescripts that are not meant. How do we unbundle the value chains so that small businesses can participate? The third aspect is that of knowledge sharing because we can avail opportunities for small businesses but if they don't have market intelligence of the areas they're going to trade in they won't they won't survive we are partnering with the different departments whether you look at derco whether you look at the department of agriculture and and dtic to say how do we build small businesses that would have an appreciation and the access to market intelligence so that the products that they develop are market ready mm -hmm. and of course they can be consumed anytime mm -hmm. the other aspects is the issue that as africa specifically not only south africa that does that we've been playing a very junior role uh, in terms of of the global value chains we export products raw 
and now we are saying let that change let's make sure that we are able to process the products in order to create the jobs and this is where small businesses participate when we process those raw materials when we build factories small businesses are the ones that are at the forefront because there's tiny things that small businesses are doing we don't want the whole pie we have to coexist with big businesses but it is important that the value chains are clearly defined and therefore given a space are giving space to small businesses the last element that we don't pay attention to is that of collaboration mm -hmm. as the different countries and the different businesses mm -hmm. and this is what our story was about yesterday if we are to tap into market opportunities for SMMEs we've got to look at all those aspects that must be addressed mm -hmm. small businesses they still struggle with export uh, requirements whether it's contract management therefore we invest in a lot in business development support to assist them make sure that when they get into those markets they're able to be sustainable by providing whatever is required by the client mm. if you have an opportunity in India provide 3% of whatever product that's massive numbers that's why that capacity is important to bring certain SMMEs together to say we're building your capacity but you can work together in order to be able to meet the demands and we help you stay sustainable yeah you're absolutely right departments like the DTIC have the one-stop shops uh, for example that are helping businesses with all that uh, regulatory um, humps if you will that they have to face as small and medium businesses um, a billionaire Patrice Mitsipa said something interesting yesterday um, about uh, special visas created for small and medium businesses and uh, this is something that you concurred with um, and maybe just explain to us why it would be an important consideration to implement in our market well I spoke of the creation of a conducive environment yeah. and that also talks to logistical arrangements and the people being able to move from different countries if we are to do trade but that does not mean we must undermine each other's sovereignty yes. so all these exemptions we're talking about to create that conducive environment they take that into consideration that's why yesterday we had the, min the meeting of the ministers of, of foreign affairs that are discussing to say is it necessary that we do it if we don't introduce uh, those visa uh, exemptions what is it that we can introduce to enable trade so today when the heads of states are making their declarations they'll be taking us through what has been agreed upon right now i'm not at liberty to say anything in relation to that it you is the responsibility <laughs> no, there are heads of states that must do their job <laughs> yeah no absolutely a minister uh, talk us through um a digitization technology it india um plays a big role here because they've made it an integral part of the advancing of their economy through small businesses using technology what's your department and i suppose related stakeholders are looking at in this regard well, the first thing is to have that appreciation that the entire country or the world the worldwide uh, is, is, is driven by digital mm. economy. Now we can't let small businesses be left behind. This time we're taking a different tune. We are saying let small businesses not only be consumers of technologies, let them also be drivers of the technology yeah. that are there. That's why I said we have established more than 110 incubators and some of those are tech hubs wherein we showcase the work, we give an opportunity to our tech gurus to, to do whatever they can do. As the department responds for small business development, we said let us allow them, all those that are coming, whether it's software development or whatever product, let's help them with the IEP process, all those necessary registration process, we assist them, but also an opportunity to showcase the product, because for it to work, it must be showcased somewhere mm -hmm. it's not only ending it with the prototype that prototype must be utilized so we said we're going to act in that base level of saying let's bring your product we test test case it and then it can be taken bigger markets India has a grid in terms of the exchange programs it's one of the countries that will be visiting in November we are following up on everything that we've been discussing year, a year out uh, the, throughout the year uh, this year to say you have made commitments that you can allow space so we'll be taking some grouping of, of small businesses to India for exchange programs to do things practical learn also on how they do certain things that's why one of the critical components of the BRICS platform is to ensure that there's technology transfer programs mm. and we are looking at leveraging on 
on that. But as I said, not as consumers only, yeah. but also as innovators that must have products consumed by other countries within the BRICS family that we mm. spoke about. Mm. Minister, we've spoken about the regulatory framework, collaboration, skills transfer, um, and the different uh, points of assistance that businesses can get. But no business can get by without the money. And so here we're talking about actual capital investment. Um, and it can't come from your department or from government alone. So what story do we sell potential investors to say, these are our small businesses and they need the hard cash and this is why you should give them this hard cash? The story that we sell is that we have a conducive environment here at home. Mm. We are a country that enjoys good climate. We have a good financial uh, a banking system. We have good logistics. But then, as you correctly put With it... some challenges. Yes. <laughs> no, no, every country has challenges. Yeah. We, we still remain the best in the continent, by the way. Mm. With all the challenges that we have, we should never take that for granted. Yeah. Actually, even in other countries, they have this outside the continent. But the point is, as we identify this, that we say is a strength. Ours is to say, now as the small businesses are coming into this space, they need funding. Mm. But for anyone to get funding, there's that that we've been ignoring uh, as the country or neglecting in terms of, of the business development support. Yes. You can never be able to use 10 million reds if you have never had access to 100,000. Mm. It applies to small businesses. So what we said, let's enhance our business development support by providing pre-investment support. We get you ready before you get the funding. And when you get the funding, we provide post-investment support so that how do you carry out and be sustainable in spending the funds? Now you correctly put it. As the department, we're not going to be able to fund everyone. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's true. That's why I said earlier on, the ecosystem approach becomes important. We are now, uh, we've been tasked by the president uh, to establish the Venture Capital Fund as the department, uh, working with the Department of Science and Innovation under Minister Nzimande. We're doing that, we're bringing other ecosystem players. We have engaged also with the African Development Bank to come, because they're also looking at certain aspects as they will be partnering with us on the work that we are doing. So we are looking at that to say what kind of fund. The conditions in South Africa are different from conditions in other countries. We haven't seen lots of flow of, of monies when you're talking to venture capital. But also we call upon South Africans the same way they do Gas stock fell. Yes. This is what we need for small businesses. Government alone will not be able. The second aspect of crowdfunding is to utilize the, the legal prescripts that we have. The Triple PE Act is very clear. It has the component of the ESD, the Enterprise Supplier Development, that it requires big corporates to spend 3% on. And now that 3% is what we have not been able to give direction to, to say, where must it be spent? Yeah. And now we're doing that to say, you can't spend the entire ESD component going to training. They've neglected um, the township areas and the rural areas. Now we've asked cabinet to say, can we be given access to administer the 3% because it talks to the constituency we're responsible for. On this 3%, let's take 15% for township businesses, 15% for rural business, and then the other percentage we can see we cut it cut across. But put certain amounts towards capacity building, infrastructure provision, and of course uh, the, head, the, the, the head calls the capital that they need to run the, their businesses. All of these are meant to complement what government cannot do. There is estimated 17 billion rents that lies only on the state-owned entities on enterprise supplier development. We are trying to put in place policies that must be able to bring everybody on board. Right now, although we're a coordinating department, but we don't have the regulatory powers, which is something that we are advancing for uh, in cabinet and parliament, we have issued a policy. And, and amending the legislations that must give us certain powers so that we can hold each other accountable to say we have agreed on ABCD, there's this legislation place but you're not compliant. But as I'm saying, the engagement continues with a big business who sees the need to bring small businesses on board. So we're beginning to define where this 3% must go to. And that is outside the 30% procurement, mm. by the way. Don't confuse, it's the 3% yeah. that must be spent then and then the 30%. <coughs> But what we're saying, small business cannot only be put at the end of the value chain. Let's make sure that the 30% cuts across all the segments of the value chain. And these are engagements that are there. National Treasury released their, funny, their 
a financial inclusion policy which tightens things and give access to ensuring that small businesses can participate. So there's lots of interventions. We have issued also our policy on funding for small business and cooperatives that gives clear guidance on what must be done to increase the funding for small businesses. Mm. Ease of access to that is at the center. Yeah, I mean, you speak with a big smile on your face, so it looks like you're very confident that the steps that you are taking are going to advance the small and medium businesses, not only to access the South African market, but the rest of the trading bloc, and the African market, and I suppose the world. Minister, thank you very much for joining us this morning. And uh, that is Minister Stella Ndabeni Abrams, very uh, precise in her engagement with me today. Gareth on the different initiatives that are being taken to advance as small and medium businesses in South Africa and giving them the capabilities to access not just our market like I say but the rest of the world.